Good morning. My name is Gary Coburn and I'm with ExtendingClouds.com. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at CoburnGary. Check out the site ExtendingClouds.com or review any of the content created on YouTube by subscribing to this particular channel. Today we're going to talk about vRealize Automation 7 and custom HTML notifications using the Event Broker. For a little bit of review, we're going to quickly talk about the event broker and enabling it. If you have not yet, I highly recommend you take advantage of evaluating the event broker and all of the custom properties that can be used at state changes or otherwise. Today, we're going to talk specifically about the custom email notifications and what can be done out of the box as well as what can be done with your own custom creations. As an example, we'll jump right into evaluating what a submitted request looks like out of the box. This out of the box basically gives you the request information and the component details that are important to you. This is zero customization, but if you wanted to customize the content coming out of the box with the notifications, there is a very specific KB article that talks about and illustrates exactly how to add things like headers to it, adjusting templates, and all of this content is available for you to consume. The challenge is that I've heard repeatedly from customers that editing these and pulling them down and dealing with all of the, the pieces that it takes to actually accomplish this is something that becomes a bit cumbersome and not something that most people want to dive into. So with that, I took the idea of, hey, let's take advantage of the event broker and create our own custom HTML email that actually feels like something our organization would pass out. So with that, the introduction here is I will show you. Here's our logo being presented. Here's the different header content. Here's the idea of the passing the machine name and how large the machine is and what available IP address it is. and, and it, depending on the OS, we pass an AC, SSH or RDP link so that you can launch directly from this, this environment. And you can see, hey, this is expiring in one day. So all very simple kind of constructs, really kind of the same details that come out of this custom email. But the idea is, is that you can literally take advantage of any of the custom properties and include them into your HTML template in a very simple kind of way using VRO. So with that, let me introduce you to the vRealize Orchestrator Send Custom Notification at State Transition. A couple of things you'll notice first and foremost that you're going to want to edit this particular workflow Give it the SMTP host name that you have, the port, define whether you're using SSL or TLS. Set the username who's authorized to send. Set their password. Define a from user and from address that you can take advantage of. So if you set all of those things, the rest of the workflow will actually build out the email subject the destination address, and the content that you want to pass to the actual users. <clears throat> Pretty simple. If you look at uh, what we've done is we basically pull all of our custom properties. We make a decision on whether we're going to send a notification or not. And we complete the actual workflow. So if you look at the workflow, uh, it takes advantage of all of the other existing event properties, pulls all of the content out, logs all of the different properties that are passed from vRealize Automation, 
pulls down the IP address of the particular machine, grabs the custom OS, and the reason we're doing that is we grab the IP in the OS and say, hey, if it's Linux, we're going to SSH. If it's Windows, we're going to set it to RDP so that those links are available. Next, we actually look at the lifecycle state. So all of our major states are reflected in this. We look at requested, waiting to build, building machine, machine provisioned, machine activated, deactivated machine, unprovisioned, and disposing. And you'll notice I have these pieces commented out because honestly, my experience is customers only want to take advantage of pulling data for requested when the machine is ready for use and when it's being disposed. So we basically pull out the requested and set a variable saying, hey, your self-service request has been submitted. We set a variable for activated saying, hey, it's ready for use. And we set a self-service request for completely disposed. We then go in and say, hey, if there's no substate defined, so if it's not one of these three components, then that means null and we will say email required is false. Otherwise, we set email required to true. We set the to address, which is the owner. So whoever owns this or will own this machine when it's complete. And we set the subject of the email to your self-service request has been submitted or it is ready for use or it's been disposed, for example. Next, we actually build the content of the email. As you can see, this is all HTML code. And I'm, I've made it readable. So instead of a single line, which is usually a, a challenge within VRO, we've actually set uh, single quotes for any of the content that we want to write to the con to this particular variable. And we add pluses at the end of any line and it will automatically go to the next line. So you'll see things like my URL link, which you would likely have for your own environment that you'll want to set. Uh, the thank you for your request in a heading to, for example, then the paragraph, this email is letting you know that it is going throughout the updates. Your request is for this particular blueprint is at this state. And then listing out your machine is named the machine name. It's being provisioned with the following CPU, memory, disk. And again, these are custom properties that come out of our property pull. Anything that you have as a custom property will be available for you to use. And then we'll expire. So we go through and say, here's the URL link, which we created based on what version of the OS it was. And we dive in and, and say it will expire in so many days. Then we make the decision. If email required equals true, then it will actually go and send the notification. If it equals false, then it will shoot down and say, hey, I've completed this workflow. I don't need to send anything. Now, for the sake of just uh, kind of illustration purposes, when I talk about anything that you want to be able to send as part of that email notification is all of the content that we collect out of the actual request. So any of the things that you create, so custom.os, for example, that I created, custom business group date details, reservation details so that you know where things go or, or so that you want to get them out to the actual consumer. Um, anything that you wanted to actually create, things that in, up to and include costing or anything you, that you really want to do. So it gives you a really powerful kind of state to take advantage of. So without further ado, let's jump into our environment.
So first things first, we'll go to our property groups. I have already created the payload examples. Again, this is illustrated in our enabling the event broker. And all I'm really doing here is going through and taking my building virtual machine, building machine, deactivated, requested, activated, unprovisioned, disposing, waiting to build all of those and passing all of the parameters. Now, again, there's more detail there that you can pass very specific parameters, but we've got that defined so that at each of those different events, you will actually get the properties passed. Next, let's look at our actual blueprint just for the sake of illustrating the custom OS. So on my Linux machines, I've got a custom property that is defined that is custom OS that's being passed and that's where it processes where it's Linux or Windows. Let's go to our event subscriptions. We'll create our event subscription. We could run for all events, but if we do that, we're going to get the different phases as well. So you get pre event and post for each phase when really what all I want to do is I want to do it based on my phase of post. So life cycle state phase post. We're going to hand it our custom notification. We don't need it to block or wait. We're going to publish this and then we'll go put our request in. Our request has been submitted. Now we'll go back and evaluate the send custom notifications as they come across. As you can see, we've triggered the first request. If we take a look at what is actually run, we pulled the custom properties in. We made a decision. We're sending the notification and the notification is sent. If you evaluate the second one, which is waiting to build, we've come in and said, hey, we didn't set the property to pass the notification, so we're going to make the decision to not send that notification. Now, if we go back to our webmail environment, we'll see that we have a service request submitted. and the content is created. So with all that, we've created a custom notification that triggers on the events that we want it to trigger on. It sends the exact custom notification that we want it to send, and we have a complete log of the data that gets passed as well as whether it succeeded or failed and something that you can illustrate in uh, VRO pretty simply. Stay tuned for version two of this, which addresses a challenge that we found about uh, the v event broker and how it utilizes or is accessed based on software components. So if you want a post provision after, or if you want to post email notification after software components run, which often take a, a, a long time, then there is an extra step or two needed to do and we'll uh, we'll illustrate that in our next environment so thanks very much and i look forward to your feedback and hopefully this brought you a great deal of value